In today's lesson, we are going to talk about simplifying fractions. Now, if we take a pizza and we divide it into eight equal pieces, and then we eat four of those pieces, we say that we ate four eighths of the pizza, which is represented by the fraction four over eight. We could also say that we ate one half of the pizza. So we're gonna take the pizza divided into two equal pieces. We eat one of those pieces and you can see that we eat the same amount, which means that four eighths and one half are equivalent fractions. Remember, equivalent fractions are written differently, but they represent the same amount. If we go to our fraction strips, just to remind ourselves uh, what that looks like, here's one half. Down here, we're sh we have four eighths, and we can see that they uh, both line up with our line, and they are shading the same amount of the fraction strip. So four over eight uh, is equal to a half, and they are equivalent fractions. Since one half is more common, we are much more likely to say one half than we are to say four eighths. <clears throat> now, when we say one half, instead of saying four eighths, then we are actually simplifying the fraction. And simplifying the fractions means to reduce the fraction as much as possible until it is as simple as it will go. So these one half cannot be made to be any smaller. There is no equivalent fraction. Um, that we can make that will have smaller numbers. All right, so how do we reduce the fraction? Well, when we want to reduce a fraction, we have to find the greatest common factor uh, between the numerator and the denominator. So if we look at uh, four, the factors are one, two, and four. The factors of eight are one, two, four, and eight. And the uh, greatest common factor, if we look at the numbers that are on both lists, one, two, and four, four is the biggest number that is on both lists. That is our greatest common factor. So we take our greatest common factor and we divide both the numerator and the denominator by four. If we divide the numerator uh, by four, four divided by four is one, eight divided by four is two. So when we divide both the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor, we get one half, which is what we showed. So let's review these steps in more detail. Remember that a factor is a number that we multiply together to get another number. So four and six are factors of 24. Now remember that a number can have multiple factors because 24 has more than just two factors that will multiply to give us 24. In fact, let's go ahead and find out what all of the factors of 24 are. One times 24 gives us 24. Two times 12 gives us 24. Three times eight gives us 24 and four times six. So we can say one, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, and 24 are the factors of 24. A common factor is when the factors of two or more numbers is the same. And the greatest common factor is the biggest number of the common factors. So let's find the common factors of 12 and 30. So 12, the factors are one, two, three, four, six, and 12. The factors of 30 are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. So the common factors are 1, 2, 3 is on both lists, and finally 6 is also on both lists. So the greatest common factor is the largest of the common factors. So we can see that 6 is the greatest common factor between 12 and 30. Uh, let's find the greatest common factor of 24 and 30. So the factors of 24 we found were 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. And the factors of 30, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. So we've already found these previously. Common factors, the numbers that are on both lists are 1, there's a 2, there is a 3, and there is a six, and those are the, all of the common factors, and the biggest number of the common factors is six, so six is the greatest common factor between 24 and 30. Now let's go ahead and reduce this fraction four over 12. Now, in order to reduce the fraction, we want to find the greatest common factor between the numerator and the denominator. So, and then we're gonna divide both the numerator and the, div, uh, the denominator by the greatest common factor. So the factors of four are one, two, and four. We found that previously. And the factors of 12 are one, two, three, four, six, and 12. So the common factors, the numbers that are on both lists are one, 
2, and 4. So we're out of factors here, so we're done. And so here's all the common factors. And so 4 is the largest of those, so it is the greatest common factor. So we divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4, which is the greatest common factor. So 4 divided by 4 gives us 1. 12 divided by 4 gives us 3. So our 1 third is our reduced fraction. So the fraction 4 over 12 reduces to 1 over 3, and that is as simple as it will go. Now let's look at that visually just to show again that we are correct. So here's our 4 twelfths. So we divide the circle into four equal pieces and we shade four of them. Then we're going to divide the circle into three equal pieces and shade one of them. And we can see that the same amount is shaded. So four twelfths is equivalent to one third. Now let's reduce 10 uh, over 35. So again, we want to find the greatest uh, common factor between the numerator and the denominator. And then we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor to simplify the fraction. So the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. The factors of 35 are 1, 5, 7, and 35. So the common factors are simply 1 and 5. And there are no other common factors. So that means that 5 is the biggest number and that is the greatest common factor. So now we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 5. So we're going to take 10, we're going to divide it by 5, which is going to give us 2. 35 divided by 5 gives us 7, and this 2 over 7 is our reduced fraction. So 10 over 35 is equivalent to 2 over 7, and 2 over 7 is as simple as it will go. So it is the simplified fraction of 10 over 35, and that is your lesson on simplifying fractions.